Now, pretrial hearings for Private First Class Bradley Manning, the accused WikiLeaker responsible for the biggest document drop in American history, continue this week. In an unprecedented move, defense attorney David Coombs requested a closed hearing, a dry run of sorts. Um, the point is to try to decide how to approach classified information during the trial. Supporters of this decision say it will make for fewer delays when the official trial actually begins. But opponents claim that this is a dress rehearsal for a secret trial actually shrouded in a lot of secrecy. One of those opponents is Jesslyn Radak. She works with the Government Accountability Project, and she joins me now for more. Hi there, Jesslyn. Thank Hi. you for joining me. Sure. Thank you. Now, this has been described as an unprecedented private hearing. What makes it so groundbreaking? Well, normally in the military, you can have closed hearings in a court-martial, but normally they're limited. There have been an extraordinary number of closed proceedings here. I am not personally against the fact that they want to have a closed hearing tomorrow to try to hammer this out. What I am I'm having trouble with here is that, for example, the judge asked the prosecution, how much of the trial do you envision closing? And the prosecution answered, oh, very little. But then when she drilled down on that, it turns out the prosecution said that they wanted to close 30 percent. And that is really unprecedented. So we are dealing with an unprecedented level of secrecy, even for a court martial. And one of the reasons that they do want to close 30 percent of the trial is because the government has 141 witnesses who can testify. About half of those people um, will be testifying about classified information, meaning that they would have to close 30 percent of the trial in public. And also, we do know that one of the people that will actually be testifying is somebody that was um, possibly involved in the Osama bin Laden raid, the information that came out of there. And they actually talked about disguising him to actually um, make that so that it would be even more secret. But obviously, um, you have to have some disagreements with uh, bri uh, Private First Class Manning's a lawyer, David Coombs, and his decision to actually ask for this dry run of sorts. Why do you think he made this decision? Well, I I'm only guessing, but I think he made this decision because he wanted to see how this very unorthodox procedure would work in reality in terms of having a witness that he may not be able to cross-examine the way you normally would a witness who has already been granted the ability to be examined in an undisclosed location in disguise. Um, and I, I, I think it was the right move for him to ask for that. There's been so much that has been secret already in this trial leading up. I mean, there have been no transcripts of court rulings of what happened in the courtroom of motions that are submitted. And finally, when facing a lawsuit, finally the government released 84 documents. But again, that's out of 400 documents. So it's already a case that's been riddled with secrecy. And a lot of people say, like you're, such as yourself, say that this is a, a just another example of the fact that they are planning on conducting a secret trial. At the same time, though, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, opponent, or, uh, proponents for this say that it will actually help speed up the trial when the official trial begins because it will make for fewer interruptions. What is your response to that? You know, I've heard that I've heard that argument, but the way to have fewer interruptions is to hammer this stuff out ahead of time, which would be what normally happens in a civilian trial. You would agree ahead of time um, on information that is sensitive being used with substitutions, with redactions, with summaries, sometimes with code words. You would figure all of that out ahead of time, um, well in advance of trial. And right now, we are a few weeks away from June 3rd when trial begins. And this is, again, the military asking for, my understanding is, an unprecedented level of secrecy, even for a court martial. Now, when Private First Class Bradley Manning first addressed the court, his testimony was classified. But a recording was actually leaked to the Freedom of Press Foundation. What was the justification for the, that testimony in particular being classified in the first place? And were there any negative consequences of having it leaked? 
Well, I think, um, I don't know why it was classified in the first place, because I know uh, documentarian Alexa O'Brien has been making verbatim transcripts of what happened. She is a regular citizen, and even the military has referred people in the press, oh, go ask Alexa O'Brien if you need a transcript. In terms of the consequences, I think the judge was quite displeased with that. Um, and said that it was not a right but a privilege that the press be allowed to know what's going on. And even for this hearing today and the one tomorrow, press credentials were not initially permitted. The Public Affairs Office was not going to issue any press credentials, and I guess they relented um, on that decision. Jesslyn Radak from the Government Accountability Project, thank you for weighing thank in. You.